Determined to rise, the competitive nature of man took over. He began to believe that those who weren't for him had to be against him. He wasn't afraid to burn a few bridges or make a few rash decisions to get to where he wanted to go. But perhaps he had it backwards. Story of a man who never knew of everything that I can do. My whole life been feeling like... So I'm at the Girawin Sporting Complex in Noosa, Sunshine Coast, Australia. And behind me here, there is a purpose-built criterium track. It's about a kilometre in length. And I've got my road bike behind me. And I'm going to show you what not to do in one lap and what to do in the second lap if you want to become fitter and stronger on the bike. You might be wanting to just beat your mates around the block. You might be targeting a Fondo event. You might be wanting to start racing your bike but you don't really know where to start. And really, you've got to start with your base layer, your base fitness. You might have heard of it before. And what a lot of cyclists do is when they go out and ride, they'll do bunch rides, they'll ride with mates, and they'll be all over the place. They won't be properly training their base. And it wasn't until I properly trained my base until I really took my cycling to the next level. So I want to show you in this video, okay, what does that look like and what are some of the common mistakes cyclists make? And I've actually been thinking about doing this video for some time because it is such an easy correction to make and such a common thing I see cyclists do. But I've refrained because as many of you will know, a coach of mine, David Sturt, he came up to the Sunshine Coast last weekend and we put together a Cycling Fundamentals online course with some YouTube videos that will supplement that course. And I didn't want to cut the grass of that series, but as it turns out, yes, we talk about this, but we talk about so much else. So this is a great way to whet the appetite for people out there that are just wanting to learn a little bit more and become fitter and stronger on the bike. So there's a few things to discuss before we get into these two laps. Number one is the problem with understanding this is you can turn into a bit of a dickhead, and I did. So I want to explain to you, like a bonus tip at the end of this video, okay, what, what I'm talking about and how to mitigate turning into what I turned into. Number two is if you're just getting into road cycling, yes, this is important to understand, but first things first, understand your bike, get a proper bike fit, understand how to handle the thing, go ride it a few times, and then you come to this. Number three is at the start of this YouTube channel when I created it about seven or eight months ago, I met with Luke McElroy from Metz Performance Consulting. They're in Melbourne and they do lab-based testing. And I thought from that interview I had with him after I did a full lactate blood test and VO2 max test, I would share some insights that he shared in that video in this one, just for some credibility from a scientific perspective. So a big part to this video is understanding your training zones. Now we're not gonna go into deep level on all training zones today. We want to focus on zone two, but it's very important that you understand that there are, depends on who you speak to, five zones, seven zones, but the different zones train different systems and they enable you to train with structure. It's kind of like going to the gym, right? You've got a weight rack and am I training power, strength, muscular tone or endurance? That'll dictate what weights you lift and how many reps and how many sets you do. This is kind of like the same thing. And to work out your zones, I'm going to put a little link in the below video description area, but they're essentially a percentage of your heart rate or your functional threshold power. Now, heart rate is important, but it does vary and fluctuate based off the environment, such as weather, levels of fatigue. So ultimately, if you can train with power, or both ideally, but power is your best way to go because it doesn't fluctuate. You've got to put power through the crank, and to work out your zones with power, you need to understand your functional threshold power, which is essentially how long you can hold power for for an hour. And you can test that through either going out and doing a 20 minute test as hard as you can, and then you times your average power by 0.95, you get your FTP. Now a lot of people instead will do it, what you call a step test, which is like a ramp test on an in indoor trainer. And once again, I'll link to that below for people who want detail on that. And the other one is what I did is, is I went to a lab and did a proper VO2 max test and lactate blood test, which gave me all my numbers quite definitively. So my power and my heart rate numbers combined. And I'm gonna to link to Met's performance below. Like they're not sponsoring this at all, but I just wanna show you, it's actually not that expensive, depending on where you live, to get one of those tests done. The big thing that, uh, you do a field test, you know, do a 20 minute time trial test, step test, whatever it is and you get your zones from that. You can normally get a pretty good FTP, generally, you know, within a couple of watts, right? 
what I really struggle, and what I, I'm still trying to figure out myself, but I, if there's a possible way to do it, but what you can't find is that aerobic heart rate zone. It's not possible. How, unless you measure, physically measure blood lactate, how are you gonna do it? It's not a percentage of anything. The other reason why, why a lab test, or especially the hybrid test that we did would be better than um, a field-based alternative is that, again, it comes down to the strengths and weaknesses. You go do a 20 minute time trial, what does it tell you? It tells you FTP, right? Yeah. How are we gonna improve that FTP? Do we need to do aerobic stuff? Do we need to, do we need to do volume? Is it need to be VO2 intervals above at 95% VO2 max? Does it need to be more threshold style work? We don't know because we don't get the lactate graph. We don't get that fraction of expired oxygen graph, yeah. okay? So without further ado, I'm gonna show you what many people, many cyclists do when they go ride their bikes either side by side with a mate or by themselves. This is what not to do. So before we start lap one, let's look at my training zones that I got when I went and got tested at Mets Performance. Now I've been training my base for a couple of months before I went there and nothing else. So you can see I've got a big base, 180 to 300 watts, but everything above it is really poor, very small zones. And that's because I hadn't been training anything outside of base before I went to see Luke. And if we use my training zones as an example, I've gone out of the blocks way too hard. I've gone threshold, VO2 max, then I've backed it off because I'm now going down a hill. Now, a lot of cyclists, when they go down a hill, they'll stop pedaling because the movement of the bike, we're about 40, 45, we're gonna hit 50 kilometers an hour. I don't need to pedal, the bike's going pretty quick. And as a result, we're not in any zone right now. We're not even working at all. And you do a lot of this in bunch riding as well when you're sitting behind a wheel. So I've come around this right-hander and now I'm back on flat roads and I'm gonna ramp it up. Movement of the bike starts backing off a little bit and I've now hit a headwind. So I'm gonna drive it into the headwind because I wanna keep the bike moving. Revolutions per minute, a little bit low as well. We want them building base between sort of 90 to 100, but I'm driving it into this headwind. I'm all over the place with my zones and now come around the corner, a little bit less wind. I can see a hill. I think I'm gonna attack this hill. So I'm gonna back it off again. I'm back into zone two, although revolutions per minute, because of the wind conditions, I'm sort of driving it, not really in that 90 to 100 zone. And now I've hit the hill and I'm gonna smack it up this hill. About a 5% gradient it hits. I know it's only short and punchy, but I wanna drive it over the hill. And now once again, I'm well and truly over my anaerobic zone here. Now I'm gonna back it off back into zone one because I'm a little bit cooked at the top of this hill. And this is how a lot of people ride their bikes. And this has a massive impact if you wanna train your base physiologically. Um, look, there's some crossover effect of course, but they do have actually in theory, they're polar opposite adaptations. Okay, one's aerobic, one's anaerobic, yeah? So for this one, to improve our aerobic engine, we don't want lactic acid in the system because it actually starts to shut off the mitochondria in the muscles. That they're what, they're, they're what use up the oxygen, okay? So we're about to start lap two here. And based off what Luke's saying, I don't want to be jumping around too much in terms of my zones. I want to stay, I try and aim for around 230, 240 watts based off my level consistent pedal stroke, you know, between 90 to 100 RPM. Now that may fluctuate and vary. This course is a little bit tricky, right? We're going around in circles, so there's wind conditions come into play. We're up and down, but really trying to focus as much as possible. Consistent pedal stroke, between 230 to 240 watts, I'm trying to keep it on. You see I've dipped down a bit there because I'm going around a corner, I stopped pedaling for a second. And then sort of between 90 to 100 RPM. And you wanna stay there for as long as you can throughout a ride. Now, some people might be questioning, why do I not have heart rate? Heart rate is very important. I don't train with it. I need to start doing it. Really important because some days you're gonna be feeling a little bit off and fatigued and just to understand where your heart's at, I think is very important to complement power. Now, you can see I had a headwind there. I was keeping it around sort of 230, 240 watts. Once again, I'm approaching a hill here, 220 watts. Now. This is the tricky part. A lot of people will get to the bottom of a hill and they're gonna to wanna to attack, but we don't wanna be jumping into different zones if we're training our base. So I've really backed it off here, come back down through the gears, I sit up, I'm tight in the core, and yeah, you can't help but elevate the power a little bit. I mean, for me, I'm still in my zone two, but you're gonna lift it a little bit when you go up hills. It's almost impossible not to, but I'm not getting excited. I'm not out of the saddle. I'm still in zone two. Okay, and then when I get to the top of the hill, I'm gonna lift the gears and continue to pedal to maintain my momentum to stay in zone two. So this type of riding is gonna help you build your base fitness 
significantly. Okay, so now I'm sweating up a storm because I'm actually doing, in between the camera, the complete opposite of doing base. And that's because I've spent time building my base and you know now I'm putting up the framework and actually today's more of putting on the house, sharpening the pencil. I'm doing some 10 second efforts around the track. And look, that's the kind of stuff that you do after you've built your base because you can only, as I said, get your house so high, get yourself so strong if your base isn't solid. And that first video that you saw, well, I'm not telling you not to ride like that because you will, and I still do. It's impossible when you go out and ride with some people and your mates and bunch rides. Bunch rides are like that. You're going hard, then you're going slow. And look, a bit of bunch riding can actually be can be pretty good as you know an incorporation into your training regime, but only to get a bit of speed in the legs because races are inconsistent. They're like that. But for you to get strong, you got to build the base, and you got to you got to really spend a lot of time. That second video is just going out there riding side by side with somebody that's at a similar level to you or by yourself and just stay in zone two for as long as you can. And don't free pedal. Obviously, you've got to stop at traffic lights, but keep a consistent stroke through the pedal at all times. And you'll be surprised how fit you get. Now, some of you might be saying, well, how long do I do this for and how often? Depends how long you've got in the week to train. And if you've got, say, 10 hours in the week, you don't want to go do 10 hours of base training your first week, you want to build into it and give yourself a rest week every so often. But an actual complete training program for base, we've got that in our online coaching course, which will be coming shortly. So the last part of this video, so the bonus tip, don't get too anal with this type of training. So this happened to me, I became a lot fitter and stronger, training base and then implementing structured efforts. and. As a result, every time I went out riding because I wanted to maintain my fitness, I was doing something specific, right? So, just don't be too anal. If you're riding down a mountain and it's steep, just ride the thing. Don't worry about staying within zones. And if your mate Johnny sends you a message, he wants to go for a ride, but he doesn't understand zone two and base training. And despite the fact you're trying to teach him, he might take a while to come around. So, still go for a ride with him. You know, don't, don't get too anal with this thing because cycling's not just about becoming fitter and strong it's also about socializing and hanging with your mates i'll catch you all in the next video but i know such guys shouldn't be idolized when you're grown up you can go nuts in a prison system that's privatized i don't know but you should slow up hold up hold up i don't really care if they listen